Okay, so hello everybody. Um, welcome to the third expert panel discussion. Uh, for uh, so the topic we have this time is the impact of technology on entertainment, um, filmmaking, and fashion, and also television. And I'm super excited uh, to like reintroduce ourselves and also introduce our guest panelists this time. So uh, like if you had already attended our sessions before, I'm Sukanda Sahai, I'm a responsible hyper automation expert. And uh, uh, moving ahead, uh, let's let's go on and take a you know round robin and introduce ourselves. Yeah, sure. Probably I'll go next. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is Vivek. Uh, my expertise is more on the performance testing and engineering side. So very happy to be here and we look forward for this discussion. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Ajay Tiervo. I work for Richibo Soxnails in Pleasanton, California. I'm an observability subject matter expert. Hey everyone, this is Astika Gupta. Uh, I'm a senior PM at Meta. I've also worked as a PM at Microsoft and eBay. Um, I'm also into fashion and pursue modeling as a side hustle. So this topic is um, super fun for me. Welcome everyone. Um, should I go next? Yeah. Hey everyone. Excited to be part of this panel for the first time. Thanks for inviting me as a guest speaker. I am senior PM at Walmart Global Tech, leading the on-trip experience for their last mile delivery org. Prior to Walmart, I have worked as a PM in small companies like Bold. And uh, I'm very experienced driven product manager. So my insights here uh, uh, would be more like how technology and product experience plays a key role in, uh, in, in making a successful entertainment product. And very excited to be here and looking forward to our conversations yeah thanks everyone um so after the introductions uh, let's start with the first top like the first question we all had in our mind which is what are your views on like the technology impact and entertainment industry okay i can pick it up uh so i'll share my views as an observability subject matter expert so as an observability subject matter expert, I believe technology had a profound impact on entertainment industry, particularly in terms of how content is created, distributed, and consumed. Uh, advancements in digital technology, such as high-speed internet, streaming services, social media platforms, have given rise to new business models and revenue streams for the content creators. However, uh, with the increased reliance on technology, there are also challenges that arise in terms of data management, security, and privacy. As an observability SME, I believe it is essential to monitor the performance of these technologies and ensure they are functioning optimally to provide a seamless experience to the audience. Oh, I can probably go next. Um, from what I have observed and what I really like about the intersection of technology with the entertainment industry is probably like, firstly, the thing that comes to mind is movies uh, using, say, CGI, you know, computer generated imagery to um, the advanced uh, editing software that they have that they use in like movies and uh, probably other like, you know, visual shows that get created, probably even live shows that get created, right? Um, that is super entertaining. And um, we, we see Hollywood movies, right? It's like so advanced uh, these days. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. Again, Ajay also touched upon like the distribution side of the entertainment industry, streaming platforms like Netflix, Netflix uh, Prime Video, Disney Plus, um, you know, audiences can now access like a vast library of uh, content at any time. It's at the disposal. So that's the other thing that has really changed at least my life. I'm a big entertainment content consumer. So this is this definitely comes in handy. Um, the other thing is that I'm a uh, I'm huge on social media as well. Like I love social media apps, uh, be it like Instagram, TikTok, or whatever. They're like super fun. And uh, it's it's what's really interesting is how you know fans can now engage with their like 
you know, the, the people that they appreciate, be it like, you know, um, celebrities, actors, or like any other social media content creators. Uh, it's, it's also easy on the uh, people who are creating content to kind of share, you know, what the daily lives look like, what the behind the scenes look like. And it really has filled that gap. Earlier actors and all these people used to be like so far-fetched. People used to be like starry-eyed to even like just meet them in person. Um, but now it's become so accessible. So those are some of the things that, um, you know, technology has enabled when it comes to entertainment. That's great. Uh, so for me, the way I look at it, technology and entertainment is tech has made entertainment more accessible. Um, before, if you see, we were always finding a different avenues to get entertained. Now with tech, what has that done is uh, it has brought things closer to us, uh, be it OTT platform or things like that. So now we have much more easier access and even the data uh, is much more cheaper compared to how it was a couple of years back. And even the performance, so that's where I'm also more interested in because the performance of these streaming platforms or gaming or the OTT has, has been so seamless and companies have really evolved and made it happen. So an end user can actually experience that without any interruption. And uh, be it smartphones or be it uh, um, a VR headset or anything like that, you have multiple ways to get entertained. And also it has brought in people uh, more closer where content creators have evolved from uh, forums like uh, TikTok or YouTube, uh, which was not part of the uh, entertainment industry before. So entertainment as a whole landscape has changing and technology is the big uh, foundation for that. And uh, having uh, easier access and uh, high performance is what driving this towards uh, a future is what I would say. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I agree with the, the point that you have, Avek. Uh, just wanted to say, I love how like the new uh, social media apps have democratized like who is a celebrity or who gets to show their art, their, uh, you know, say a singer or an actor, who gets to actually come in front of the screen, in front of the people. It's like so democratized right now. Uh, earlier it used to be a select people so there, there would be like all kinds of you know nepotism and politics and all other stuff also driving who comes in you know and now I'm seeing that a lot of people who are really talented going are going on these forums and like like you know presenting their art we are getting to consume it and as like you know uh, as people we're getting to like you know appreciate that and they are getting opportunities to now like you know go into the big screen which is something very new that I've seen in the recent uh, I think uh, since pandemic when, when the, uh, that was the height of TikTok and uh, then reels and stuff I don't know if you all agree but I would let Archil definitely like you know talk about her views yeah I think you guys covered great points and if I have to add I would just say that these days, I think the definition of entertainment has changed so much. Like pre-COVID, we used to wait for, I don't know about about you all, but I used to wait for Bollywood certain movies that, hey, that's releasing on, you know, next day and I'll, let's go watch on that weekend. And I used to carry like movie pass or some kind of subscription, which allows you to be able to watch movies in theater. But now I think that that the charisma, that, that craze has gone so down. I mean, you don't have to wait to, for movies to be released you rather wait like when it's coming on your ott platform so like the interest from theater to has come down to the television and and the entertainment from television has come down to your even phone like mobile phone you can get entertainment even while standing in a queue to grab your coffee from starbucks or you know while waiting for your next train or it could be your next flight whatever it is i mean you really it's up to you what you want as a consumer, as a customer, to get entertained, and there are ample of you know opportunities and sources out there. So, so like, and then that is kind of making you know in a way like it's making easy for us as a consumer. But if we go and think from a different lens, which is a comp from a company perspective, I think it's becoming difficult and difficult because every entertainment driven company is facing so much competition with the other um, you know content builders talk about 
um, Disney talk about, you know, um, HBO movies, uh, uh, content creator, or even Netflix, right? Netflix used to be one democratized or just, you know, having its own monopoly. Every U.S. house, like 90% of the U.S. households used to have Netflix subscription. And it's not, not like a long back uh, time. It's, I think, a few years back. It was it used to be like seven nine nine subscription, and every household will have at least one Netflix subscription. But now it it increased to about like thirty ninety nine, fifteen ninety nine, and it's competing with so many other subscriptions. And 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 each company, while thinking about content creation, is also thinking about how to release that content to the end consumers. Is it via Netflix or you know other apps available, or is it? through my own app. So every company is, and, and that's making difficult for us as a consumer, like, hey, if I want to watch this, do I have to subscribe for now X, Y, Z, and then again back to this, or I continue to have all the subscriptions and pay all the $10, $15 subscriptions every month. So like, it, just for an example, like I was talking to one of my colleagues, uh, I think a couple of months back, like, and he mentioned, there's a great show, Ted Lasso, have you watched it? I'm like, it sounds interesting. Where is it? Netflix, Prime, I have Hulu, HBO, you know, Disney, all the subscriptions which I have come, came to my mind. And then he told me, no, it's on Apple Plus. I was like, what is that? I mean, is that a new thing now? It's another subscription. And I literally checked and I was like, okay, I, 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 I'm going to take a shot. And then I took seven days free trial. But it, I got so addicted to it. Like I, I liked the show. So I ended up paying $6.99 post that. And I'm still paying for another month. So it's kind of like, so, so in summary, I would just say that the power of entertainment is kind of changing so much. And it's though consumers have power in order to what they want to watch, but companies are playing strong and very competitive in terms of how they want to provide that entertainment to you. So it, it kind of, you know, and, and I mean, we can continue the conversation, but it kind of... No, Ansel, I actually, mean, you, you brought a very good point. Um, have, a, have a couple of things to add here. So I think uh, companies realized uh, the potential of business uh, after Netflix. That's how you see even in India, right? Uh, Z has their own streaming and uh, Hotstar has its own streaming. Colors have their own streaming. So everyone wants to build that ecosystem and have their own streaming done. And the way they can survive is exactly what you said. They have to create a quality content which spread enough news uh, interest in the community so people can subscribe to it. And now it's uh, there are these companies are also um, investing, producing big movies too. Like uh, some movies are produced, built only to be released in Netflix or only to be released in uh, Amazon Prime. So the definition is slightly changing. Uh, but like you said, it, it's, it's all end of the day business and people competing. And uh, now, now we cannot have just one subscription and <laughs> we, we need to have more than one to be uh, viewing everything. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was very interesting because uh, like, you know, Archil, you and Vivek talked about the other like end of the spectrum where, you know, oh my God, there's so many subscriptions and there's like uh, so much you need to keep on top of. Uh, and like, and you're talking about it, uh, about the problems, right? And I was talking to my husband, like, I think day before yesterday about the opportunities. I, I remember as a kid fighting with my sister and like, uh, you know, my siblings and like uh, fighting for like watching what I wanted to because we had one t television and the whole family, well, it was very nice, right? The whole family would sit together and watch what like the whole family watches, which is very nice. But then there were also those like, you know, remote fights that, okay, I, I need to like, you know, I want to watch this and what. And I used to always think, oh my God, in future, we'll have a split television, which like, which will have two remotes and I can, you know, watch my stuff and my sibling can watch her stuff. And, uh, and you know, mobile phones kind of did that. Like with these OTTs and mobile phones, like uh, right now I see a lot of the times, like my husband and I are sitting, we don't really fight for the remote because we're like, you know, on our phones, watching our own things when we want to. And then we want, when we want to watch together, then we watch, like project it on the television and watch. So I thought like that solved that problem, but like created new problems. Like, you know, like, like you know, paying for so many subscriptions and where do we watch this show versus where do we watch that show? So, so yeah, like what, what do you all think about like the, 
opportunities that that it created yep for me like the businesses got some new uh, models and they got some revenue streams with this ott platforms right but it also brought challenges to the theaters mm-hmm. like most of the movies that i have watched are just coming to the ott in a week or two weeks time nowadays so which is also a ch- challenge for theaters right to handle the i mean to attract the audience uh, like before so yeah i would say we are in a very bizarre time the reason for that is uh, one it has created a platform for anyone and everyone to be famous uh, we have seen a lot of uh, youtube celebrities coming out in, in us like mr beast or graham stephan in india we have bhuvan and and uh, tanmay and others so for free i mean you can just use your camera and uh, stream it or have videos done and you can be famous mm-hmm. so equally on the other side uh, we have seen some big heroes movies not uh, faring really well in the box office and uh, the reason for that the trade expert says that that's because they are in multiple platform people they they open their phone they see them in instagram they see them in youtube some mm-hmm. something is happening so they are too much in in front of people so there is no exclusivity so that why people don't want to really wait and go and you know see them in the theaters and I, and there is a good saying that you know maybe shahrukh khan and others who are who are superstars so far are probably the last set of people who would enjoy such a fame going forward you may not have such a huge stardom uh, among anyone uh, so as a platform like opportunity wise i don't know where we are going it just mixed uh mix of everything so it's going to be really interesting to see how things will pan out in future yeah i think i agree with all the points that are being said um on the split side i would also like to say that sometimes because there is like so many choices these days i really get confused because i have limited time and i don't really understand which show should i be watching should i be watching an interview or should i be watching a movie or should i be watching a show like uh, in addition to different platforms there are so many different content types also like all the way from like short media um as you know small timed videos to like all the way up until like movies and stuff or uh when i'm like hooked on to like one show there's like probably just four episodes and then i'm like oh i don't want to watch anything else but i just wanted to watch like this show like in continuation um so while it is like really a pro that we have so many options it sometimes becomes like overwhelming at least to me i don't know about you guys if you agree with that but it becomes overwhelming because i really have like probably an hour or so that i dedicate to like just watching entertainment content and then mm-hmm. i'm like super confused and i'm always asking people for their recommendations that okay just filter these options out for me and tell me the top 5 things that i should probably be watching uh, i don't have the time to like sample everything and then determine <laughs> so yeah so astik i have a question question for you so something interesting because I think we all have gone through the phase where we just browse don't watch anything yeah just to figuring out what to watch and you've spent enough time and you're not interested anymore yeah um so what i see especially on youtube and other places is uh, the more you watch specific type of content those only those are getting uh, suggested to you so again it's a rabbit hole you keep watching it they keep suggesting it so how do you see that restrict you in terms of exploring other things or unless you really search for it you're not really getting any content related to it you will just get the same content so how do you see as a product manager or someone who what's your views on that yeah no i i completely agree like having recommendations on any platform is both good and bad it's good in the sense that you know the technology has figured out like what your likes and dislikes are and you get only those um, those types of content but then on the flip side it's also a con because i'm not able to discover new content types so i personally have gone back and forth on just like stopping uh, youtube from uh, tracking my search history because sometimes i feel like okay i need like some more content so i just like remove all the history and i'm like okay just like start from scratch or like uh things like top rated or top viewed or whatever like that also helps 
Uh, and then I usually sort of uh, go on like my browser and then I like like I'll write queries like, OK, which are the top five, like say content creators or new types of content that have come on YouTube or what should I be following for like say fashion or movies or whatever. And uh, again, as you rightly said, it's a rabbit hole. I think it's um, both good and bad like and it but it's good to have that option because a lot of people want recommendations. They are really powerful technology with like algorithms is like just really figure out what you like and that saves my time like so many at so many number of times but sometimes I'm like in that mood of like inspiration and discovering new content and that's when I face a challenge interesting do we want to move to fashion now uh, like you know and talk a little bit about uh, what we all think about technology impact on fashion yeah that sounds good yeah um, um... Yeah, go ahead. So I, I just want to uh, mention that if anyone of you listening have any questions, feel free to uh, just leave in the comments. We will address that at the end. Um, mm -hmm. So fashion is um, tech in fashion. So what, what it has done is um, made things much more easier to try out because virtually you can try out uh, your glasses, even your dress. Uh, there are some AI models where you upload your photographs. Uh, that will change your dress altogether and give you a different photograph. So technology is going towards all those regions. And uh, what it is actually doing that to us is it's easier now to order something, get it in a day uh, in Amazon and return it the next day. Mm -hmm. So fashion has become much more easier to put our hands on. Um, and also I'm seeing that these days, um, uh, AI fashion models are also coming into picture. So we have AI models who who is not a real person can be hired, um, can be used as a fashion model itself. So fashion, like any other sector, is also getting uh, a push from technology. Um, it has helped people to sell more, uh, be more fashionable. Now I can look and see how other people are dressing, how other people are viewing the fashion, if I like something, uh, automatically it gives me an option to order the same dress. So it's it's more easier accessible, also giving us more confusion. So that, that's what I feel fashion yeah. and it says. Yeah, I had uh, like a little bit of experience, like especially because I follow Instagram Reels, I have found now relatable people with my kind of body type and my kind of style, like, you know, what I like. Um, and I can follow them and also like, you know, uh, get uh, clothes for myself, you know, and uh, like I've tried AI stylists like, um, you know, Stitch Fix and all. They've also worked out well for me because they have like, you know, it took a couple of iterations, but they could start like sending me and recommending me stuff that I really liked. So from that, like, you know, from dressing up myself, I I've thought that I have more options. But uh, I, I'm very curious to hear about it from the others, like what they feel the tech impact on fashion is. So I personally believe a about fashion models and virtual influencers have potential to disrupt uh, the traditional modeling industry, but it's unlikely that it'll completely replace the real life fashion models. Uh, I also see some limitations to the a about fashion models and virtual influencers, like they lack the physical presence and expressiveness of real life models, right? Which makes it difficult to showcase clothing and accessories in a realistic way. Additionally, there might be some concerns around authenticity and trust as virtual influencers are not real people and may be seen as uh, inauthentic by some consumers. Yeah. So Ajay, why do you need, why do you see there's a need for us to have a real models? Because end of the day, passion you, you really want to see how it looks on a person and uh, you that's how your view is right so do you really see there yeah. is a, a real person to be in the fashion to convince you in a way yeah i feel uh, the a about fashion models will not be as effective as the people who uh, do the real time modeling right i feel the real time model models will have more physical presence and more expressiveness uh, than the a about ones yeah. Okay. Interesting. Let's ask our model in in the house. <laughs> what do you feel? <laughs> um. Well, I would not say that AI should completely replace 
real time models um real life models um i think real life models are able to kind of there's more of a relatability factor uh, when you know person sees another person in that clothing or in that accessory and probably can relate more you also have like some particular motions or some styles the way you want to like you know just on the spot probably wear a clothing on the ramp or like change out of a clothing and stuff like all those like immersive kind of experiences i think uh, can probably only be brought upon by real life models um but on the on the other side i also wanted to like touch a little bit upon the f- how designers feel right like because i've worked with um, a lot of designers and they actually are sort of shifting towards using vr and ar technology wherever needed uh, because they feel that um you know when it comes to like design and prototyping they it's allowing this technology is allowing designers to create and test uh, designs in a virtual environment before actually creating physical prototypes so that's like a low lift low cost um you know uh, effort on their end and uh, this definitely saves time and uh, again of course like reduces cost uh, by allowing designers to identify and you know just address like potential issues early on before they've actually designed the entire piece because some pieces are like so heavy and they require like you know i don't know thousands of hours of like hand uh, embroidery and what not and if you can actually visualize in ar and vr how the eventual piece is going to look like i think it's going to like really save you time and energy and cost so that's one and then the the other thing that i wanted to call out was uh, you know these interactive retail experiences um i did experience this once uh, and some fashion brands are actually using ar technology to create these interactive retail experiences so for example um, customers may be able to use their smartphones you know to scan like the clothing items and access all the additional related information or like you know styling tips and um, how to wear that and stuff so you get that hybrid environment of okay you are walking into a store in person but you're also utilizing technology to uh, extrapolate what the different styling options are you know when it comes to clothing so that really enhances the marketing um, for the brand as well so those are some of the points i had thank you Acha, I'm curious to hear from you. Like, what are your thoughts on technology impact on fashion? Yeah, I think um, I would say they all are very related. Whether you be talk about entertainment or fashion, the influence of technology is kind of making ultimately ex- everything ex- so accessible to individual. And in talking about like India, I mean, I see so many people living in small towns. being able to follow fashion just because they have access to instagram and they can see what people who are living in mumbai or you know delhi or maybe uh, other uh, other uh, you know popular cities are wearing on a daily basis so i think it's it's a matter of like how i mean you guys covered already points about like how you can visualize yourself while before buying something thing but even in order to know what to buy and where to buy things have become so accessible just because knowing what what is the definition of fashion now people do not have to follow what you know what just celebrities are uh, are wearing is only the fashion real real fashion they create their own fashion they make their choices they create reels and they influence others to be able to realize and believe that okay whatever you know you feel comfortable in you can make that fashion and you can you know really define a new kind of category for the fashion so i think i really like the way the definition of fashion is changing because of technology and accessibility and uh, it's no more no no more like okay you know only the actors would be defining what fashion is it could be you or it could be me who defines what fashion is and people start to follow that and uh, and the way you get to kind of uh, i mean and and also like in terms of you know what you are buying is and again like buying a 10000 rupees dress or even like 1500 dollars dress is not which will give you which will make you that you you have carried some fashion from xyz i have seen people creating reels 
kind of like recreating what Alia, Alia Bhatt has worn on, you know, on her wedding, for example. And it's like, it's like, I see that they are buying those dresses at a much cheaper price from, you know, other websites. And, and it's, it's kind of like all an ecosystem in a way that there are people who are interested in buying and why there are designers who can create such similar, uh, uh, you know, dresses. And there are e-commerce websites, apps who are able to sell to um, those those dresses to to these individuals. So kind of like there is a whole new ecosystem of this fashion industry is getting created, in my opinion, where uh, it's, it's just changing the definition of you know what you want to wear, where, irrespective of where you are living, what you are doing, you can carry what you want to um, you know wear and and how you want to resonate yourself with. I mean, it doesn't matter these days. Okay, thanks a lot. Now, that was like a very lively and lovely discussion. Lots to learn from. So let's move on to Q&A. We have one question from Archit. Uh, even after having features like Netflix party, I feel a divide has been created among families and friends because of ODT platforms. Because every subscription is so cheap these days and the feeling of togetherness is missing. As product managers, how do you feel that this gap can be bridged by companies? So that's for the product managers in the house. I'm still rereading the question. Anshul, if you want to go first, feel free. Yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting question, right? Like, I mean, I think... As we, as we discussed already, it's important to have those individual profiles because everyone's preference is different, what, what they want to watch, when they want to watch, everyone kind of like earlier, it used to be nine to five job for everyone and then, you know, play time, then dinner time and then TV time. So then everyone was together watching TV together from eight to 10. But now, I mean, watching TV for me could be 11 to 12, while for my husband, it, it's like nine to 10. So you, I mean, though you want to keep your individual uh, preferences and it's great that we have that option now to, to, to know what we want to watch and maintain that profile. But at the same time, I think talking about togetherness, I do agree that there could be some features you know, which um, these companies can think about, which influence families and, you know, even couples to, to watch things together more. And it could be simple things like, you know, shared profile, like, you know, family profile. So you keep on adding content into that profile, getting it ready and everyone can watch what is being there. And then the, and then you have some kind of like you know scheduling scheduling option within within that profile, or even even don't talk about those fancy features. I mean, just if you know that there is something which is kind of showing that hey, we have ABC available which we need to watch together, you'll feel more inspired and kind of um, at least start thinking in that direction. That hey, I mean, uh, let's sit together and and this this is the content which is which we need to watch together. Yeah, great points agreed. And um, I would particularly want to like just emphasize on a particular use case, for example, like I live in the US and my mom lives uh, in India, or for couples who are in a long distance relationship, right, or families living apart geographically, I think there are apps, there is technology that allows you to watch the same thing at the same time from different locations. I think that's powerful, like that's bringing people together, right? Uh, even uh, in Metaverse, I think they, uh, once, you know, Metaverse is like easily, becomes easily accessible and a lot of people start, start using it. Uh, there are options that, you know, where I can watch the same Netflix show with my mom in India and me in the US. And that is bringing us closer together. We can, we can actually visualize, we can see each other living in, uh, uh, you know, sitting in on the same couch in my living room with like the exact same, um, you know, setup of my room with a TV that is playing an actual Netflix show and you're wearing that uh, headset and that's really powerful. Um, so I feel that it's up to the humans and the people in relationships to kind of like just value the togetherness and the time that they want to spend together. Like, for example, um, my husband and I, we, we make sure that we have, um, you know, lunch and dinner at the same time, whenever it's possible. And so at that time, we make an effort to kind of free up our schedules and like come together uh, and watch the same show. 
So it ultimately depends on like the kinds of tastes that you have that you share with other people and of course your schedules as well. While there could be like features, you know, added in these existing platforms, I feel that technology at a much larger scale is already solving these problems. And in the future, I feel like especially people like living apart will definitely, um, you know, derive that, um, yeah, that impact of like togetherness through these technologies. Yeah. I have, I have a couple of points to share. I um, do agree with Anshal and Astika, very well said. But I feel it has to come from an individual than from a company's because companies want more people to watch on more devices. That's how they make money, end of the day. They could be an option, but they cannot enforce it. That, that's for sure. So yeah, again, uh, people have to make effort, reserve a time or reserve something uh, weekends or weekdays, make it a habit to spend time with family. That's how they can slowly have the togetherness time. And um, I also feel, um, yeah, end of the day, all this technology is making things easier, but also giving more options for people to watch something else outside as well. So it has to be an individual effort than from a company side. Um, that's, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I do feel that Disney tried to do something where uh, like if a new movie comes on like the uh, movie halls as well as on the Disney OTT at the same time and they had a particular I think $30 for that movie and I remember that kind of like drove some, uh, like you know some of us to be like hey do you want to watch this together so we split the cost and then we watch this on TV together rather than like, you know, me like sitting on an evening and just scrolling through different platforms and deciding to watch, oh, this is a new movie. So sometimes it's also driven by like, you know, cost. I see that uh, like with my husband who is a fan of uh, UFC because those are expensive uh, matches. So like they always think about like who they can watch it together with and share the costs and also enjoy like, you know, uh, uh, the camaraderie so yeah I mean uh, sometimes you know cost brings that aspect as well but I don't know if it's like you know uh, the best way to solve this problem yeah for togetherness of family and friends I would recommend uh, more OTT uh, uh, platforms uh, follow the uh, Netflix Netflix have this group plans so and it also has good personalized recommendations features so more OTT platforms following that, uh, which are offering cheaper prices uh, compared to Netflix, will actually attract more uh, togetherness between family and friends. And, and do you guys actually think uh, there is a section of people who are promoting the traditional way of uh, togetherness, right? Uh, be it being uh, one with yourself, like meditation or reading a book, uh, I see more people slowly adapting some traditional stuff. Um, again, spending time with family, reading books, meditation, all inclusive. I think there'll be a more uh, self-help or mental health promotion happening. Uh, there are enough advocates. Um, yeah, there are enough recommenders for that. So definitely there will be a section who will be promoting it. Again, it depends on who is going to consume it. Uh, a kid who is playing a game will never be in a space of all this so togetherness is going to be a challenge i think we have to just find a way to work around it whoever is a head of the family or someone has to put down some ground rules so that you know that that can be followed in the in the family there's another question um i have uh, i had another question in terms of fashion uh with fast fashion on the trend and ar assisting in try-ons online um a lot of people tend to buy more than what they want. How do you feel about this problem? Can be tackled in terms of sustainability? And how can companies push products in the market while promoting sustainability? Yeah, I can I can probably take that. Um that is so true that uh, you know, with like virtual try-ons and like with making um, you know, delivery so fast and quick and making returns so easy. People do uh, buy more than probably what they want. Uh, but a lot of companies are recognizing this in terms of sustainability. And for example, a lot of uh, companies, you know, are accepting pre-loved items of their own brands or they're like these um, 
consigning firms that accept like pre-loved items, which means that if once you've used your product, you can sell it to them. And then that way, like, you know, the, the product is still in like sort of that circular economy. Um, a lot of companies, like I think Michael Kors does this, um, they accept their like own branded products from like different people and then like also like refurbish it and like sell it. Uh, that's number one. Number two is that a lot of companies are recognizing that they need to use sustainable materials, right? So that's really very important. Uh, to kind of shift to that so that just you know from the grounds up the way a material is uh, or the way a dress for example or a piece is like built from scratch if it involves all the sustainable materials it, it if it involves like a sustainable um you know ecosystem or a supply chain and a sustainable process then I think uh, we are kind of solving that problem grounds up at the root cause of it um what else? I had like one more point, but I'm forgetting. But I'll pass it over to like other panelists if they have any other. I have an opinion because uh, the way I see is long term, it's not sustainable. Simple answer is that uh, because people buy more than what they need. I have come across a situation where someone said if they have to buy a dress, they buy three sizes, like a medium, large and small, because each brand has its own fitting. They don't know which one is going to fit the best. And they keep one and they return the, the remaining two. So you see there's a mindset. Uh, you see there is an opportunity for them to return stuff. It is not sustainable at long run because it's going to cost. It's uh, There's a logistic involved. There's a cost involved. Restocking, reselling, everything is involved. It's going to translate slowly into consumer itself. It's companies not going to take a loss and uh, do a business. So the, the principle they all work on is maybe 5% of the people are like this, another 70, 80% are genuine and they don't have any returns. So it still works out in long run. Uh, but, but to be a simple straightforward answer, sustainability wise, it's not sustainable. Recommendation would be companies keep a track of their behavior if there is a frequently returning stuff um, every time or very frequently, then they can impose some rules. So that way they can uh, have some limitations on people who can uh, abuse or misuse such services. Um, but yeah, because of the competition, uh, people, they have more options, they'll switch to some other platform or some other uh, seller who provides such options. So it's 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 in that zone right now but i think in future as we go there will be either an increase in cost transfer to us or companies will start imposing some level of rules to make it sustainable yeah and i hear you vivek i know amazon has a normally detection so when they flag a person who's doing this a lot on a regular basis so like they are flagged and then they warn them and then over time uh if the behavior does not stop I have heard uh, like uh, some of uh, like my acquaintances who like who had done it. Uh, they were doing it because they, they were not sure of the size. But after like also being warned, their account was blocked. Then they had to go through this whole process to explain and unblock it. So I, I think a lot of companies who have easier return policies are doing this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, I think with improvement in AR, I think it can help, uh, AR, VR, it can help a little bit because at least, uh, like if we think about not fashion, but like, you know, initially when I would want to buy like, like, you know, like a furniture piece from Amazon or any of those platforms, Wayfair, I used to be confused how big this is, you know, because I have ended up buying a kid's chair instead of like, you know, a, a human chair because uh, it was not shown up to scale. And now with that whole feature where you can, you know, just show it like how, like you can view it on your phone, how it's going to look in your house. Um, I think similar kind of uh, stuff are coming up for fashion where you can try it on and uh, you can see how it looks on your body type. I think more refinement needs to happen on your body avatar that's in, in your app that looks like you, that, you know, like, the body type is like you and uh, and then you can really see how it's going to look on you. Uh, I think that's that can solve this problem of over ordering. If we uh, forget the malicious intent and think about genuine people like, you know, being confused about it. Yeah, I think I would just add saying uh, 
I, I think you all you guys all covered about the return. Easy return is being a, a strong factor driving these decisions to overbuy. Mm -hmm. So if companies are enforcing restrictions in, in terms of how you can return while still making it easy, but in a, in a restricted way, it would definitely be impacting uh, the behavior somewhere. And also like uh, uh, another angle I feel is like, is definitely is more of a consumer responsibility in terms of thinking about environment and sustainability. And, and but thinking about this whole e-commerce, you know, and delivery and return ecosystem, I think there, there this is kind of providing opportunities to multiple startups or different companies, which are thinking in terms of like, hey, if this is already happening, how can we make these uh, buyers who anyway shop to start selling what they don't want to use or what they just literally use once to other folks who are not able to afford to buy uh, you know, a $200 dress, but might want to buy it for $100 from, from a one-time used uh, product. So, I mean, I, I, I know certain examples like Poshmark, Shopify, which you know, have been doing this where people just buy, sell their used bags, you know, all the fashion items, and, and there is a huge demand from, from buying over there. And that's what I was kind of talking about earlier. Like, uh, I mean, fashion has become its own definition. And since because these options are available to buy at an economical price, I mean, uh, people find it easily accessible and are able to, you know, utilize as they want. So I think sustainable, sustainability, I would say, just to wrap up, like, is responsibility for individual how much you are buying how much you want to kind of keep with you versus return while definitely companies need to play a stronger role in, in influencing your behavior but working for an e-commerce i know the ultimate goal is you know the gmv the revenue like more you sell the more uh, you know profit you can make so while companies would start to think about uh, it, but but ultimately it would be the responsibility of these consumers and then these oh, startups would actual, be playing. Uh, role yeah, there. the problem is uh, if you give an option to consumer and say, don't use it, uh, it's very difficult for them to not utilize the option they already have because they make plan in such way because I know there are a section of people who have ethical values. They would not have used the systems they don't want to. But if there is an opportunity or option, right? Giving them an option and saying don't use it, be ethical, it's you know, it's it's very challenging for a consumer to stay in that ethical grounds. Um, but there should be some um, you know, rules or imposition from the companies itself. I see more than an individual responsibility has to come from the other side, um, so that it's it's more it is taken more seriously. That's that's where I feel. Yeah, and um, just adding on to that, like a way in which we can promote that the users themselves are ready to kind of like uh, make sales and sell their pre-loved products is having like more such platforms like Rent the Runway is like one. There are like so many others, right, that sell especially luxury goods, which are so expensive to buy firsthand. Like a Chanel bag is like $10,000 these days if you buy it. How do you guys uh, see a counterfeit uh, items coming in because uh, yeah. online right that is a big problem yeah there's yeah. a lot of like scams happening but i think these days you have authenticity platforms too you pay like five dollars and there's like somebody who can just photo match and tell you whether this is um, authentic or not and then once you buy the product you can definitely get it authentic on authenticated and then if it's not an authentic product then you can definitely um you know open a complaint like case with the with the platform that sold it before you even like buy a product you can request the platform to authenticate it these days a lot of platforms have tie-ups with third-party authentication platforms so i think counterfeit is like definitely a problem and always has been but there are like good measures that people can definitely use these days Mm -hmm. That's like another angle of using technology. I mean, technology is allowing you to authenticate so you don't have to worry of, of like what you are buying. And as Astika mentioned clearly, like I think platforms are themselves considering this a responsibility that uh, I mean, they what what is being sold on through them, through their platform is is not uh, counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, and there's one last question in the interest of time that we see in the chat. Um, so like in chat GPD, uh, we give some pointers and it gives a complete draft, uh, which can uh, be tailored as a final copy. Is it possible to similarly give a basic concept story and whole draft and the whole draft script or even better, the whole movie or episode is available. So um, it sounds like we're back to entertainment and like, uh, it's like, are we doing like, can we do like chat GPT based stories? I know that I went to India and I did that for my nephew, like not movie stories, but like I wrote some like stories for kids and like read it out and for, for my uh, nephew. And then one of uh, my husband's best friend was here and uh, I did that for his daughter and she loved it because I knew what she likes. So I put in those characters and I told Chajibi to write a fun story and Chajibi wrote that. And like, you know, I added a few stuff from myself and I like, read it out to her and she loved it. So I think we can do the same thing for, uh, you know, movies as well. Uh, what do you all think? It sounds like AI driven, like, you know, story concepts. Yeah. I know I've commented there that, um, you know, I've always fantasized about this concept, at least in fashion. So I have always fantasized that I can probably use technology to design my own clothes. Like, mm -hmm. why do I have to rely on another designer? I could be the designer and I know myself the best, right? Like my color, my style, my cuts, my neckline or whatever, whatever that is like. Mm -hmm. So can I like just use technology to design my own clothes and probably another designer like or tailor stitches it for me or like the worst, like the, not the worst, like, but the the best, best moonshot idea that I had was like, um, you know, in the future, if we can have like, like how we have like Xerox machines, but can we have like something wherein we can put like a cloth <laughs> inside and it, you know, stitches automatically and gives me um, like a final piece, depending on the, the design that I had uploaded or something like that. That's a really crazy idea, but I've definitely fantasized about this. Very interesting. Right. Story um, using AI, I mean, if you go to the basics, right, whoever the storyteller or a writer is, they research, they they see other movies, they they come up with their concepts, they brainstorm and they draft it. So if AI can do all of it, uh, then why not? I mean, at least for the initial draft or at least for the initial uh, brainstorming, we can definitely average it. And we want it or not, I think in future that will be a reality. And mm -hmm. there are some platforms who are coming up with, you give a concept, they would build a website for it, or they would build a, um, characters for it. And it's definitely going to evolve. There will be movies around it completely created by AI platforms. So yeah, we're sure going to have that. I've seen AI ads. So I've seen if you give a concept, story AI and uh, story.ai, and then there's also um, another uh, ad uh, AI product where you can just like, you know, put in your concept and uh, it builds the uh, ad campaign, like a 30 second ad campaign for you. But there's a little bit of tweaking required. It's not still there. Uh, but that was very in interesting to see that, you know, that's possible. I think I would say it sounds crazy as well as interesting at the same time. I mean, while thinking about a movie or uh, a show script, I think the the organic, how organic it is and how you know unique it is drives people towards watching it. So mm -hmm. Chat GPT, if we think about it, it's a it's an AI software which is you know giving you results based on the data available on internet. So I mean, though it can be a good starter, but at the same time. Time it can it might limit your creative thinking, especially as a movie or show producer or or like story writer, because uh, you don't want to have those biased thinking while while planning something great for your uh, for your script uh, based on what's being already built. But again, it could be. I mean, I it, it's very debatable, um, and chat GPT in, in itself is very debatable. Like. Um, uh, you know, how how much leverage it can provide to your daily uh, working. Um, yeah, so I think for me, it sounds very crazy, but at the same time, it could be a good option to utilize.
applies for somebody who is new to this industry, who is, you know, a name writing something and doesn't know how to how to be successful. So uh, something like, I mean, I think all softwares help you to start with, but if you are trying to build something great, then um, then using data from available sources in terms of what has been built might not be uh, might not give you the the outcome you are looking for yeah completely agree i think ashil brought up a great point that these softwares like these ai softwares like depend on the data that's been used to train them right and that's like already existing so they can just only learn so much so they are a good tools for assisting or probably providing some inspiration based on what exists today. But when it comes to like innovation and creativity, that's so unique. Like I can just think of an idea that probably nobody else has thought about, but that is something that AI cannot give me. So I think that's a great point. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, such um, like amazing discussion and very insightful stuff. Thank you so much for joining everybody. And thanks, Astika, Chil, Ajay, and Vivek. It was really lovely talking to you all about the impact of tech and entertainment and fashion. Um, so yeah, like have a great rest of the Sunday. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye.